By now we would have taken a look at the new Northern Realms, Nilfgaard, and Scoia'tael cards for the upcoming Chronicles expansion dropping on October 4th. But today, I want to take a look at Syndicate with you guys. And Syndicate hasn't really been the topic of buffs lately. They've received quite a few nerfs to the Poison archetype. So it's nice to see what they've got going on for the next one here. And off the bat, you do see Siggy Ruven Mastermind. So I'm thinking with this card, it might have something to do with Collusion. It might have something with the gang categories and... You know, that could be quite interesting, but we'll get through it here and find out for ourselves. We've got Pulling the Strings, which is a crime card and has profit zero. Seize an enemy unit with zero or less power. Increase profit by one for each unique gang category in our starting deck. And increase the power and decrease the profit by one for each gang category we control. So we could potentially get either six coins a combination of both or seizing a unit that's six power and not getting any coins so this has the potential to play by the looks of it as like a five provision muzzle card which is nuts because you know muzzles 10 provisions right and it's a gold card we have the ability to have two of these here and we can go as far as playing things like the shady vendor and being able to get more of these so i'm interested to see how this plays i'm a little bit worried that it's kind of strong for a five provision card it could be one of the better ones in the patch that i've seen so far at this cost and it could very well play like a gold card we'll see how it goes when the patch starts obviously you have to build an entire deck around it so that sort of setup does require cards like this to have some good payoffs so maybe it balances itself out but uh, this is definitely going to be one of the ones you want to look out for by what i'm seeing here guys we have little bird which is a human and agent and has a deployability of infuse self with a gang category of a unit in our deck so that could be good if we need to have more categories being controlled for pulling the strings we can make sure that we have something that's in deck and we can split it out quite a bit so i like the synergy between these cards also setting up potential collusion if we're looking to spread the categories wide and we have fee of two boost an allied unit by one for each unique gang category so I'm guessing that it means that it has, so maybe we want dual tags on things just so that we can get more of a boost, right? Potentially we can get two or three boost on something for the two coin, which is a good backup spender, I think. And then the cooldown of one, which is pretty nice. So, you know, being able to just funnel the coin if we have nothing else to spend on could be quite useful. I think you're using this card mainly for the fact that it does the infusion. So that cards like this, cards like Collusion and potentially Siggy when we get to it. I don't know what these other ones are doing just yet, but this could actually help the payoff of some other stuff. So, you know, all in all, not great, but it's also not bad. I think it's just a, a little bit of a slower play at first, but it has a good payoff when everything is coming together. And that brings us to Bart, which is an Ogroid, and it has six base power with four armor. And whenever you play a unit with a gang category you don't control, gain a coin for each unique gang category you do control. So if you're worried about removal, it looks like you can play this later on. The armor should keep it going for a couple turns. Let's say we play it after we have three gang categories on the playing field. We would then be able to play a gang category and get five coins and then play another gang category and get six coins. But if we wanted to really risk it and start this off early, it looks like we can float it first and then start playing gang categories on top of it. So this looks like it has a very high point ceiling if left unchecked. Obviously the armor helps make it a little bit easier, but um, you know, I would imagine that if this goes down, people are looking to give that a lock just because it plays for so much profit again if left unchecked and lastly here we have siggy reuven mastermind which is a human agent and aristocrat and i like that they kept the four base power just like the other siggy it just makes sense to keep it consistent we got legendary and 12 provision i love to see new hero cards coming into the game and look at collusion and a random card from each gang category from your deck then play one so off the bat it's a tutor that gets to choose one of two cards and play it 
but if we tribute nine we get to play two instead so again tribute nine's not too bad considering leader abilities like off the books could make it into a tribute eight we have madame louisa that can make the next tribute free we have things like king of beggars which would refund all the coins paid for the tribute and this would be a really good option for it because it's a nice big tribute so that's actually very intriguing. However, it looks like the last little bit here is a game changer. Tribute costs two less for each unique gang category we control. So if we've established a good board state, we've laid down the framework, we've got the engine out there with Bart, then we played the little birds and a couple other things there, then we could actually get the tribute for free. So in that event, you don't even need to run King of Beggars because you can actually work it out in such a way that you get it back for free. So this gives us a lot more flexibility with our deck building. Let's say we don't have a lot of tributes within the deck and this is like the main tribute that we have. We can play it that way. And right now, most of the competitive decks for Syndicate are actually Golden Necker variants. And I believe that's because it helps the ability to funnel cards out quickly. But with Siggy coming in after Nine provisions, right? Twelve is much higher, right? And then we have it being able to play a card like Collusion, which is ten, or whatever else we want. It just gives us that much more flexibility that Golden Necker doesn't have, giving Syndicate their faction identity back. So I'm really looking forward to see the way that this plays here. I think my favorite cards overall are obviously Siggy because it's just a really cool card design. It's just a very strong card with a super high point ceiling. I'm a little worried it's gonna be too strong, but I do think that the deck requires a good amount of skill to play, so it should sort of balance itself out there. We do have Bart though, which is really cool if left unchecked. I'm excited to see that one in play. And of course, pulling the strings just has a really high point ceiling as well. This playing like a gold card, potentially being able to do it more than once is just incredible. So these are the ones to look out for, I think. Little Bird's a good setup card. It doesn't feel like it has a lot of tempo or a big deal when you play it. However, I do like the fact that it's a backup spender. It does have the cooldown so we can use that throughout the round and you know, it helps set up this and, uh, and this quite well. So pretty interesting stuff, right? We'll have to see how it plays. Come visit back in a week or so. We'll see how the deck comes together and we could talk about it a bit more then. And, and make sure you sub to the channel, guys, because I'm going to be dropping deck guides like crazy when the Chronicles expansions released. So stay tuned for that. So many good new things on the way. So I'm really excited about it. We'll see you guys soon and stay tuned for the Scalaga card reveal video coming up shortly.